Now, the majority of people with influenza will present with mild illness, usually resolving within three to seven days. However, influenza may cause severe illness, leading to hospitalization or even possibly death, especially among those who are at risk of complications. The influenza vaccine is recommended to protect against infection and severe illness. Ideally, the vaccine should be administered prior to the start of the influenza season, as it takes about two weeks for uh, antibodies to develop following the vaccination. On Health Matters this morning, we focus on the importance of the flu vaccine as the country prepares for this year's flu season. And we are joined by Professor Anne von Gottberg, who is a principal pathologist at the Center for Respiratory Disease and Meningitis at the National Institute for Communicable Diseases. Prof, thanks for joining us. Great to have you on the show. Uh, good morning and thank you for having me. So flu season, has it started already? It felt like it started early this year. There's just been so many people. Perhaps it's maybe with this weather we've been going through. I think there might have been some other respiratory infections and viruses um, that were causing some of the um, infections early in the year. But definitely according to our surveillance system, so we have a sentinel surveillance system where we routinely and systematically test, we're seeing that just in the last two weeks, there's been an increase in influenza detections. Mm -hmm. And so you're absolutely right. It looks like um, it, the influenza season will start in the next week or so. Um, and it is a the good news is that the flu vaccine is available, so it's exactly the right time to be talking about influenza um, and for those at risk to be vaccinated against yeah. this disease. It, it, it always is a good time because influenza, you know, we talk about it, I have got the flu, but it is, it's never nice. It's nasty to have the flu. And, and I think it's important to differentiate, and we always do, but I suppose let's get back to basics. The difference between having the flu and having a cold. Perhaps tell us, what, what, what do you see? Well, the way I sometimes think about it is that you have less of a snotty nose. It's less of that upper respiratory tract um, infection. It's really a sudden onset of fever and body aches and pains and headaches. So it's, it's more severe. It feels like something else has hit you, not this common cold um, that um, we often get um, during the year. So... I think um, it's more severe, it's associated with fevers, body aches and pains, fatigue. It really is a, 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 a sickness and an illness that people, they need to stay at home for a day or two or stay in bed. Um, so it's influenza is, is the, with the influenza virus is a severer illness. Um, even if it's short lived, it's more severe than the common cold um, or some of the other respiratory viruses that we have. And the, and the thing is with influenza, and, and one perhaps maybe we don't take seriously enough, is that it, it can, and, and perhaps let me ask it in a question form, because I'm not the expert, but I've just seen it happening, that it can lead to much more complex things, perhaps bronchitis, pneumonia, if you don't treat it properly. Is, is, that, is that a correct sort of reading into, into the flu? Yes, well... If you're at risk um, and if you don't rest um, and allow your body to be able to fight the virus. Um, so, yes, it's true. I think we also need to keep in mind that other respiratory virus can sometimes do the same. And most important for guardians and for caregivers, um, for oneself, if one's living alone, is to recognize when this respiratory infection that one has is not going away and it's becoming more severe. And some of the res signs of um, respiratory distress, not being able to breathe easily, not getting enough air um, and just getting worse. And those that's the time when go to your closest clinic, your closest GP, whoever you trust, just let them have a look and see, yes, it is just a respiratory illness, it's viral, there's no need for antibiotics, just go home. And then very importantly is to allow for bed rest, lots of fluids, and giving your body the time to fight the infection. Um, but going to a clinician, to a nurse in a clinic, will also help to identify those that are at risk um, and where it isn't simply a respiratory infection where someone can be left at home, where they have to come into the clinic for observations or go to the hospital. Yeah. And it's that fine line of knowing that, oh dear, this is something serious, um, that we want um, 
individuals not to feel like they can't go to a clinic or a GP and say, listen, I'm really sick, I can't breathe. And because those are the ones that we want to bring into care and look after in the hospital. I mean, it's quite incredible when you read statistics. I was just reading something on one of the, the health providers' website talking to the fact that annually, this is in South Africa, the, well, the flu can kill 11,500 people um, in South Africa and 20,000 are hospitalized. So, you know, as much as we downplay the flu, it's something that we really need to look at. And, and the one way of, of helping, and I know we are speaking about this, is that flu vaccine. And you do get people out there that, that say, listen, I'm, I'm tired of vac vaccines. I don't want to get it. I got it last year. And actually, when I got it, I got sick. That, that's one of the things I hear all of the time. Perhaps you want to talk to us about the myths of this flu vaccine, getting it, and how effective it actually is. So, yes, you're absolutely right. The vaccine is the one thing that we want to advocate for all of those that are at risk of severe disease, because that will save lives. Um, and I know we're tired of vaccines, um, but we have to remember that vaccines have done such a great job. Um, there's so many vaccines we give to our children that have really prevented d diseases that were horrific in, um, in, in the past, and that now look, we no longer identify or even um, see as clinicians. So um, see this as uh, another medicine, another thing that is good, that helps us, and um, that makes a difference. And yes, may need to be repeated each year, but it's what we have. It's part of our armamentarium as clinicians, as caregivers um, within the clinical system. Um, and we'd like to provide enough information um, to make people aware that uh, really, um, as much they as may, they may be tired of it, um, they should um, present for the vaccine. And the reason often people say, oh, I got the flu, is because there's a real push now. There's a, um, it is the respiratory season, it is the influenza season, um, and you may have received the vaccine and then were exposed to influenza and the vaccine had no time to mount an immune response, so you got flu. Um, or um, it isn't 100% effective. Yeah. And, and none of our vaccines and none of our medications are 100% effective. Mm -hmm. So rather see it, it's going to prevent 40 to 60%. It's, if its effectiveness is very good. Um, and it's very good for a very common disease that many people will, will be exposed to during the influenza season. Yeah. So we really believe that it's an effective way of preventing severe disease for those at risk. So finally, Prof, I have to ask you this, uh, COVID. You know, we don't even talk about it anymore. I mean, it shut the world down. We don't talk about it here. And very little testing is done. And I know that there are certain medications. I mean, I think the one is, um, I always hear people talking about um, Paxlovid. I'm not even sure what that is or I've never, I don't know. I mean, is it still a thing? Do we don't really test for it much or do you just treat it the same as you would the flu? In fact, we don't, you don't exactly, you, um, you treat it the same in the sense that it's a virus, so you don't need to give any antibiotics. Um, and mostly you don't need to give any antivirals and individuals need to look after themselves um, and present if they have respiratory distress or severe disease. And it, we heard about it so many years ago in 2020 because it was a new infection It came into the population and there was no immunity. Now we have immunity and even as it evolves and changes slightly, we've had so many of the infections that um, we already have a complex immunity and hopefully and mostly people don't get any severe disease. So it's become like all the other respiratory viruses that we're exposed to, um, which is a good thing. And, um, and that's why I don't think it's necessary to test. What we do do is systematically the same way we look at influenza, we look for RSV and um, uh, so SARS-CoV-2 so that we can at least see in South Africa when is there a peak in this virus versus influenza and RSV, which is why we can say at the moment we know that RSV is increasing in children, influenza is increasing in all ages. And it's one of the ways we monitor this using other methods like viral watch where GPs are asked to take specimens and they can get more information um, on our NICD webpage. If any GPs want to help us to monitor these infections, because then we'll do the testing. You're absolutely right. That's just, you don't need to routinely test, but then we can do the testing. Um, and then there's another way that we can ask the public to get involved is in participatory surveillance where at um, Cough Watch, we ask them to join us um, and just on their mobile, uh, on their telephones it's tell us if they're getting cough and fever okay. and that way we
we can monitor the season, um, not only those presenting to healthcare facilities, but also the public who are not that sick, um, okay. what's happening with their illnesses. And that's a very good way of us telling you and others who want to then ask questions about what's happening in the country related to these respiratory oh, viruses. Prof, thank you. Thanks for all the information. We'll leave it there for now. So talking to us about the annual flu season starting in the next week or so. Take care, everybody. Look after yourself, Professor Anne von Gottberg. Let's quickly take a break. See you after this.